Okay, in this video, it's a quick video just to show how to correctly install the LM8UU linear bearings onto the smooth rods. And so what you're going to do is take your rod pack, and uh, uh, in each rod pack has six rods. The two longest ones are always the x-axis. Uh, two second longest sometimes um, are for the uh, y-axis, uh, front and back of the machine, but for the Vision Plus and the Bigfoot, they're actually for the vertical axis, which is the Z axis that goes up and down. So anyway, what we'll do is uh, we're going to actually just slide these out of there. We don't even need to clip it and take each of the smooth rods. You can actually kind of hear them. They kind of sound a little bit like sandpaper as you're moving them out. Even though they call them smooth rods, I like what's called drill rod. And the reason for drill rod uh, versus the case hardened rods that you'll see for linear bearings is that drill rod is extremely hard. It's a uh, through through hardened. It's a tool steel, so it's very very hard stuff. It's also precision ground. Uh, it doesn't have a mirror finish when you first get it, but the great thing about it is that it has a um, you know a couple of elements in there like chromium uh, that really uh, give it a very very tough. Um, finish to it but it also gives it a very very good hardness so that when you actually put the bearings on there uh, after a while they actually wear in so when you first put them in there uh, you'll hear it. it it almost sounds like it's grinding and the truth is it kind of is the great news about it is that the small little bearings that are up inside um, of this uh, bearing here the really small little balls in there they are case hardened so that the, as hard as the drill rod is through hardened the case hardening on these are actually harder, so it's not going to hurt the bearings at all. Um, what it will do is it'll end up, uh, um, you know, mildly uh, wearing in some slight grooves into here, and uh, that's a really, really good thing because it gives a very, very tight tolerance. But more importantly, um, as it's sliding back and forth, this rod is not going to flex under the stress of the extruder or under the stress of the Y carriage. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at these rods, and if you look. Uh, most rods have a smooth end and it's saw cut and it's polished down, you know, grind down. And it also has a relief on it so that it's a little bit of a taper there. But if you look, once in a while you'll see a rod that has either a blue end or a red end to it uh, that's a painted end. That is not the end that we want to use. And the reason is because that's the factory end. And uh, what they do, instead of actually saw cutting it, um, they actually take it and they shear it. And so if you look, once in a while they'll have like a mild little lip on it. And so that's not what we want to put the bearing end on. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the other end that's all shiny and smooth, and we're going to try and put the bearing on there. What you want to do when you put the bearing on, resist the urge to twist it on. Uh, these are not screws. This is not a nut. Um, so what you're going to try and do is actually, as much as possible, line it up. And we're just going to put it. It's kind of like got a little oil seal ring on there. You don't need to put any oil on it beforehand. But what we're going to do is we're just going to try and line it up as good as possible and just barely slide it on there. If you have to, you can slightly wiggle it a little bit back and forth to give it a little bit of play, but you want to slide it on there, and there we go. And you can hear that it does sound a little bit like it's grinding. That's good. No big deal. We're not going to put any oil on it right now. The good news about this is that the two longest rods, which are your X rods, uh, get two bearings on one of them and one bearing on the other. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the rest of these on here. And the one thing that you will note is that there's an, actually an extra bearing in each kit. And the reason is because if it turns out that you get these on here and you're, you're twisting it and you forget, or that you try and you try and kind of like shovel dig it in the, the bearings, you can actually pop these little bearings out pretty easily. And so you really want to be careful. If that happens, you know what, you got an extra bearing, it's not a big deal. Uh, you know, throw the one that has a bearing missing out of it and uh, get the other one. Uh, if it turns out that you do it two or three times, one little ball bearing out of these things is not going to be a big deal. So we're going to slide that in there and we got two of them. So this is an X rod. So you get two on one rod and then on the second of the two longest rods here. We check both ends. Uh, this one doesn't have any blue ends. We only want one bearing on this rod. And the 
that is for most kits that have single extruders. The exception would be if you have a dual extruder kit. Dual extruder kits have two bearings on every single rod, so you don't need to worry about it. Single extruder kits, two bearings on one X rod, but only one bearing on the other longest rod. Okay, so we wiggle a little bit on there, and we slide it on. Notice we don't twist it on there, and you don't want to ever twist it once it's in here, uh, just because you want it to have the perfect grooves, you know, going back and forth. So you see, once you move it back and forth two or three times, it really loosens up quite a bit. Okay, so there's the X ends. Let's go ahead and do the, uh, the other ones. Same deal. Look on both ends, no blue ends. And we make sure, you know, if you want to, you can actually take a paper towel and then, uh, you know, kind of wipe off some of the industrial grease or whatever that's left on there. Same deal. And if you feel that it's actually going to catch in there, then what you want to do is uh, pull the bearing off and then try it again. And make sure that you haven't actually kicked one of these little ball bearings out of here. So we're going to look. No blue ends. And as much as we can, we're going to try and get it to line up. And there it goes. On these, we want two. So we're going to do this one. Second one. And it slides in there. Good. Uh, we only, since this isn't the longest ones, it needs another one. Sometimes they'll be packed two at a time like this in little plastic bags. Sometimes they'll be in a cardboard box. Um, there will be sometimes oil on the outside of here. It doesn't hurt the printer at all. Uh, worse comes to worse, it leaves a little bit of fingerprints on your acrylic sidewalls uh, that you'll have to wash off with like uh, dish soap and warm water. Okay, so there's four of the rods done. Let's go ahead and get the others. And you know what? If you want, um, you can always uh, pull a rod out and then replace a bearing if you need to. Uh, truthfully, if you keep these, uh, you know, where you oil it once a week for the rods, um, I have never, ever, not once, um, ever actually went through and lost a linear bearing for anything. So uh, they are very, very rugged. Uh, even though they're very precise, uh, if you keep it uh, oiled, you know, on a routine basis uh, for the rods, um, the little bit of bearings that are in here, a little bit of oil will actually escape um, through the uh, the wipers, which is what they call those O-rings that are here, and that will actually make it pretty good. So let's go ahead. We're going to put this one in and slide it in there and back and forth. Some will actually grind a little bit more than the others. It's not a big deal. It's just slight slight tolerance difference or the difference in the angle that you have it in there. And now we're going to do the last rod. And you know what? We're going to do this one correctly. But how about we? Uh, I'll show you what happens when you do everything wrong. Uh, see if we can actually kick out a ball bearing out of here. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. is We're going to actually try and twist this on here. And we're going to see if we can pop a ball bearing. You know what? I didn't even pop one out that time. Um, let's try it again. Okay, we're going to take this in here. We're just going to try and shove it in there. Well, that one didn't work either. Once in a while, they will. Let me see if I can... Well, you know what? I didn't have any luck popping a ball bearing out of there. So, but you'll hear that um, as they're going back and forth, it'll sound a little bit like it's grinding back and forth. That's not a big deal. Eventually, it stops it. If you want, you can always put another bearing on there and see if it doesn't. Um, generally, it's just the way that it actually goes on there. Maybe it's because I abused that one a little bit. And... No, okay. Anyway, as they go on there, um, for the first several, you know, weeks or days that you're using it, you'll hear it grind back and forth. Um, you know, as soon as the oil works in and the uh, bearings work into their raceways that you're actually grooving into it, um, it becomes extremely quiet and you'll never hear it again. So, anyway, there you go. There's how you prepare your six smooth rods.